Hey everyone, um, welcome to our first live product demo webinar. My name is Amanda Brief. I'm our US Marketing Director here at ClauseMatch, and I'm gonna be behind the scenes um, helping out if anyone has any issues or questions. So with that, I wanted to quickly run through today's agenda. So for our product demo, it's gonna take place for approximately, approximately 20 minutes, followed by a Q&A for around 10 minutes. So if you have any questions, please put them in the Q&A box. Otherwise, if you have any questions, any audio issues, or anything else that you want to address, you can put them in the chat box. So with that, I want to introduce you to my colleague, Claudia, who is one of our account executives here at ClauseMatch. Um, so Claudia is born and raised in Montreal. However, she is headed up in our London office currently. Um, so she likes to consider herself as a London local uh, with the knowledge and excitement to guide and consult regulated businesses looking to implement a more mature and automated policy and procedure management program. So with that, I'm going to hand it off to Claudia um, to kind of set the stage and then um, get started with the demo. Welcome, Claudia. Thank you for the introduction, Amanda, and thank you everyone for joining us today. It's a pleasure to have you here um, and really hope to get lots and lots of questions answered for you at any point during the, the presentation today. Feel free to put them in the q and um, Glad to answer any live questions in real time. But before we jump into the live demonstration, a few points that I just want to highlight in terms of what we will actually be seeing. So Clause Match's product essentially has two module offerings. Uh, the first one we call policy management, and the distinction between policy management Management and the second one you're seeing, second module policy portal is ultimately policy management. Think about it as everywhere you're going to maintain your internal governance documentation between the draft to the approval and release stage. So essentially it's everything pre-publication. So typically the users that have licenses to the policy management module I'm going to say on, on a common ground tends to be governance compliance risk teams, any first, second, or third lines of defense, or any light touch users that could be policy or procedure approvers or reviewers. Now, on the other side of Clause Match, when we talk about our policy portal module, effectively what we're talking about here is where all of the published policies are going for the internal employees of the organization. So from this perspective, it's less about collaboration and, and, and maintenance of policies, and it's really more about increasing the level of engagement and communication of those policies to your employees. Um, so we'll look at functionalities uh, uh, around, for example, attestations and Q&As, um, but I just wanted to give kind of a high-level overview of this before or jumping into the actual demonstration here. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. I think everyone should be seeing what I'm seeing now. So off of the bat, the first thing I want to highlight is that ClauseMatch is a cloud-based platform. Um, so of course, available via any sort of browser that you're using. But the first thing I just want to highlight is what you're currently seeing is the policy management module that I was just referring to. So that first one, everything pre-publication. Now, ultimately, what I want to make very clear is you're going to see kind of the word policy management quite a bit throughout the demonstration. But to take it with a grain of salt, ultimately, at its core, what Clause Match is, is truly a, an advanced document manager with specific functionality built in to meet the needs typically of those in risk, governance, legal, and compliance. Having said that, this is an opportunity for a business to use ClauseMatch across the organization from an operational standpoint, uh, HR policies, tech and uh, cybersecurity, for example. Um, so just all I'm asking is as you're going through this, keep in mind that it is a demonstration instance. So um, everything you're seeing will be able to be uh, configured to your own company's needs. And there are a number of different use cases which you'll see throughout, throughout the policy management module. So off of the bat, you'll notice here, the place I'm going to start is just the ability to either create a document from absolute scratch within the, within the platform or to upload existing policies or procedures documentation into Clause Match. And in either one of these instances, whether I create or I upload, it's going to ask you if you want to assign a template to a document that you're going to be working with. Now, why I'm starting with templates is because templates really empower a lot of the automation when we talk about policy management, for example, review dates, which we'll get to in a moment. But when we look at templates here, I'll open up an example of our group policy template. And your organization will likely have a number of templates, something like a group policy template, it could be a group procedure template. You might have localized templates to meet certain localized jurisdictional needs or amendments, for example. 
But ultimately what a template does more than what we know a template to do typically is just kind of be a, a theme or a structure to a document. A template enforced against the document that you're uploading or creating will inherit this look and feel. And you'll notice there are certain locks so that employees cannot necessarily make changes to the formatting and structure. And it gives everything a really nice consolidated look and feel. So that's the first thing that templates do. It's really around the aesthetic. But I would argue that where you'll see a lot of value in templates is also the ability to assign what we refer to as the workflow, or in this case, what you're seeing here as the stages per document type. So essentially your workflow is what you need this document to go through to be able to go from draft up until release stage. So typically this includes stages where approvals are required, or you might want a certain committee to have a review stage. But where you'll see value from this as an organization is in the ability to create certain mandatory stages where you can assign either an individual or a group or a committee of sorts to approve the document. So in this, in this perfect case scenario, when this document is moving from committee approval into validation, what this validation checkpoint group will receive is a really clean email, which will contain a URL and will bring them directly into the document, not to mention with single sign on, not even needing to sign in, to be able to then approve that document um, as required here. Having said that, that approval gets maintained within your audit trail for evidencing purposes. And it also makes the life of any approver in your organization really, really easy to get with the process in that they're not being asked you know, repeatedly via emails or chased down. Everything is really quite clear to them when they enter the system where they need to approve it and if they need to leave a note to do so. So the second part about templates is we've seen the look and feel. Now we've seen the stages or the workflow that the documents can inherit. And thirdly, templates will enforce what we refer, what we know as the metadata at Cosmat. So metadata are fields in which typically replace or typically what we see organizations use as, a, as an alternative to this um, are those kind of large Excel spreadsheets that tend to have, you know, policy inventories and who are the document owners and when were they last reviewed. But typically these tend to be very manually maintained and we'll say for, for a lack of better terms can be uh, prone to human error from time to time if they're not being updated accordingly. So what metadata aims to do is essentially replace those need for spreadsheets by having all of this data made to be then reportable and searchable. So some of the uh, selectable, I'll say metadata fields that are quite popular are elements like document type. Is it a policy? Is it a procedure? Is it a framework? for example, jurisdictions, if you're working over a number of different entities, for example. Um, so these are just a few fields that I wanted to highlight and where templates really build in automation is through the review date capabilities here and where this will automate to that document owner when that document is up for review and allow upper management to see visibility on if it's, delay, if it's upcoming, if it has been missed, or if it's been many days overdue. So if I had to summarize what templates do in three things, it would be inherit look and feel, uh, allow you to, to, allow you to um, set a workflow, and thirdly, allow you to collect metadata. Now, moving from the templates, I'll give you an example of where metadata can come in handy if you wanna look up in our search capability here to the right, a term like AML, oops, sorry, I'm in my templates. Now, more than just advanced search capabilities that you would expect from a system like ClauseMatch, things like Boolean search or advanced search here, where the metadata allows you to get quite granular in what you're looking for is then to look through fields like we just saw earlier, document type. So I might be searching across a number of different, let's say additionally entities, or uh, what did we see, jurisdictions. So I now might wanna find anything I have across the business that's AML, that is a policy, and that is in the UK, hypothetically. So all of this to say, it allows you to find what you're looking for at a very fast, uh, really at a, at a, at a, within seconds. And it also um, allows you to, to be able to then report on these fields, which we'll see momentarily. Now, if I close off the search functionality and I talk through these categories and documents on the left side of the screen here. What you'll notice again is these, these, the way in which we've structured these folders is completely configurable business to business. We've chose to set it up in a way just for demonstration purposes where you'll see here, you can get really quite as granular as you see fit. 
Now, where this typically looks like a very standard way of organizing folders within your system, the benefit for you or the value you're going to get as a business is really the way in which the architecture of Clausmat is structured in the back end of the platform. So what I mean by that is if we think about that AML example I used earlier, where we were talking about, uh, let's say, an AML policy. Well, likely, if you're in a if you're in a financial service, a regulated financial services businesses, you're going to have an AML policy that might fall into a number of different uh, folders within your risk taxonomy. Where the value for here for you here is is that number one, clause matches uh, the way in which clause match is set up is that your employees will be unable to essentially retrieve or work on any version of the document that is out that is not the most recent version. So. Solution one, it completely eliminates versioning control. Uh, the versioning control challenges that are typically one of the most common problems that we hear clients talk about. The second thing that, that this is going to allow you to do is ensure that during that annual review process, when that document gets updated or if and when it gets updated, those changes are reflected in each and every uh, folder and where it lies. So it eliminates that need to have to ensure you've gone into every folder, you've exported it, you've ensured that the change is applied and then re-uploaded into each and every folder. So with clause match, that aspect does, does not exist. You update that one document and it's reflected accordingly across the board. So having said that, I'm gonna actually move in to open up a document here. And let's use our global sanctions policy for the sake of this demonstration. So the first thing you'll notice off of the bat is that this is our proprietary word editor. So looks from a, from a user experience perspective, it's very intuitive from the feedback that we've received. Um, and that it's one that is very quick to adopt in terms of learning curve. It's made it look to feel like something you're probably very comfortable already using. And in which case, what I wanna highlight here is we talked about templates a moment ago you can see this is a perfect example in which our global sanctions policy has in fact been embedded against the group policy template. So that is, that is why it has primarily inherited this structure of document, but it has also, as we've seen, inherited now the workflow that has been enabled. And last but not least, the metadata fields that we have selected for the template. So you're looking at things like jurisdictions, the review dates, which will automate those review processes, and document type that we saw earlier. I'll mention as well, this is always a popular question, can we control levels of permission or who has access to documents, what they can do on certain levels of documents? The answer is absolutely. You have complete control over who's able to have what type of access, and more importantly, what are they able to actually do on a document? Can they just approve and review? Can they leave suggestions that maybe need to be approved prior to being accepted by the document owner? Um, so there's quite a bit of option uh, optionality around what someone may have or may not have access to. Now I'll jump into the versioning control, the, the versioning uh, history of documentation. So if you look at the top right of my screen here, you'll notice I'm currently in version 2.0 and I have the ability to, let's say, select and come back to my previous version 1.5. Now, where we see a lot of clients appreciate uh, this editing button here, you have the ability to very quickly, as, as you're seeing, this is an overlay kind of page by page, but you can use the arrows to very quickly just skim through what the edits or what the document changes have been. And this is really just at a, at a high level. If I wanted to see something more granularly and see on a timestamp who made the change and when it was done, I can absolutely go in and do so. To the right side of my screen, I have here what we call the document activity, which is essentially the audit trail in this in this in this uh, in this example from version 2.0 to version 1.5. But one thing that also distinguishes clause matches our ability to not only maintain the audit trail at the document level, which is represented by this kind of page symbol. But more so, we can actually represent the audit trail at a paragraph level. So if I were to select our introduction paragraph, you're now seeing the paragraph being represented by the three lines. I can now actually even export the audit trail within an individual paragraph. And I can go as far as to get an opening of the timestamp, the change was made by who, and the date. So when we talk about versioning history, it makes it really, really simple for anyone to go in and see what's been updated, or at least if you're someone who's going to be managing or owning this document, for you to be able to very quickly see what's changed from one to another 
even in an audit, if that's being requested for you, you'll notice as well, everything is always exportable from the platform. I'm going to come back to the document here. Um, I wanna take the opportunity to show from a collaboration standpoint, if I were to now show you, I am gonna come in and make a direct edit to this document. I'll remove some wording here, but this is where effectively, if you're working with a colleague on a document and you are working in real time, this is somewhere where you can work together. And you'll notice in this case, the edit that I just made has been reflected. It's already maintained in my audit trail here at the paragraph level, as well as at the document level. And you'll also notice as we talked about approvals earlier, you can also see in this case, there is an approval requirement on this paragraph. And although I'm not the approver, so for me, I can see in this case who is and who I'm waiting to, to approve this document. Um, if you are the approver in this case, you're gonna see a nice green button and a nice red button in terms of approve or reject and the op opportunity to leave a comment and why. Now, those uh, approvals are also maintained in your audit trail for evidencing purposes. But if I come back into the timeline activity, if you are waiting for an approval or you want someone maybe to review something you might have edited or updated, you can absolutely come in and do so. I can ask my colleague, Freddie, to have a look at something. What will happen in this case scenario is that Freddie would have received an email. That email will contain a URL. That URL will not only bring him to the document itself, it will bring him to this specific comment that I've left for him, at which point he can reply to me, give me some suggestions or resolve it and tell me it looks good. So when we talk about collaboration, we're really talking about the ability to work in one central place and edit the documents in real time. If I were to move forward to now kind of the, the third main piece. So, so far, when we look at policy management, just to summarize, we've seen templating, which will empower a lot of the automation. We've seen the versioning control and how, in terms of how you structure your categories and documents, how that can empower you to have essentially no versioning control challenges, um, as well as to simplify that annual review process for anyone who's a document owner. We've seen the proprietary word editor where we're having a collaborate, uh, an area where people can collaborate. We've seen the audit capabilities and where you're evidencing in real time and continuously maintaining an audit trail without the need for track changes, which is something that I know a lot of the clients I work with are trying to move away from. Um, and now what we're going to look at is essentially document mapping. So uh, in, in the big picture, what document mapping is, is truly the ability to create relationships between documents. And some of the typical use cases we see are the ability to link, for example, regulations to policies, to procedures, even down to controls, for example. So there, there's really no limitations on how far you can go with making these sort of relationships. Um, and that's represented here by the, the chains where I'll show you, you can see, we have a number of documents that are connected to our global sanctions policy. So I know from experience that this, the, the paper of course, is representing the documents as a whole, whereas the, the, the symbolism underneath of the lines are our specific paragraphs within this, in this case, regulation. I can actually click on this and interact, and you'll see the highlight here on the left. And essentially what I'm basically now doing is seeing where this document has been connected to my policy. Now, what is the benefit for, for you as an organization in this case, or where does this bring you value, is the ability in this case to make changes to a document that will notify other document owners of connected documents that there's been changes made. So why would that be important? Well, if a policy changes and that policy is related to a procedure that the business is working with, rather than waiting for that annual review process to say, oh, the policy's changed, what does it impact? If that policy changes, that procedure owner is gonna be notified in real time to say, hey, this policy has changed. You may need to review or you may need to consider how this impacts your procedure. And you can see this in the changed category of reopened up the connections where things have changed here. Now, I like to call this kind of a looking at connections of documents really under a microscope view. But if I were to take us a step back and really see this from, from a bird's eye view, I'm gonna move into the compliance dashboard on the top here. And I set this up for the example that I, I just previously mentioned. So I am connect, I'm looking at the mappings that we have between regulations to policies and procedures and ultimately to controls. 
Now, where you'll see this downstream happen is if I were to use the money laundering regulation here, as an example, I can click on it. It's showing me what I've linked in my organization from a policy and procedure standpoint. And now you'll notice if I then go a step further and look at my AML lifecycle standard, I have a number of controls related to it. Whereas if I look at my global sanctions policy, I can actually see that there isn't. Now, this allows me to do, do two things. Number one, it allows me to use this as a gap analysis tool to a certain extent and say, great, do I not have any controls for this or are, do we have them and they just haven't been mapped? So it allows you to see where you may or may not be missing some crucial parts of your internal government's documentation. But the other thing it allows you to do as a business is really reassure yourself from a risk standpoint and reduce the risk with any sort of governing body because you can basically create the compliance link down to the paragraph level of where you are, uh, where you are meeting these, these, um, these requirements, essentially. So this is what we refer to as the compliance dashboard. And again, everything that you're seeing can be configured. So these are really simply put just from the categories and documents that, uh, output that we saw earlier. So if you wanted to have this mapped in a different way, you absolutely could. Another common example is mapping from regulations to obligations to policies and procedures. And obligations in Claude Metz's world being your interpretation of the regulation and how it impacts your particular business. Now, the final thing for the sake of this demo, although it's high level, I'll take the opportunity to show is the reporting capabilities here. So um, we'll use the, the review dates as, as the example for this, for this purpose, but Again, another reason or another area of importance of where metadata comes in. So you can see here we have the review dates, which are in, which are powered by the metadata fields. If I wanted to come into a chart and see everything that is upcoming in the next 60 days. Well, I'm currently looking at this via a document type filter, but I can go as far as looking at it instead by any other metadata field that you see here. So risk type, jurisdictions, entities that we saw earlier. So if we were to use the overdue one and see everything that's overdue and look at it, for example, by location, I can very quickly not only see the report on this, but I can very quickly actually interact with the graph itself and pull up what has been, what is overdue in this case. Now, keeping in mind where this is powerful for you, not only for your executive management team, but if you're someone who has to make sure that people are on top of their document reviews, this will allow you to to know that these stakeholders have received the number of notifications prior that the document is upcoming for review, it's upcoming for review, it's due, et cetera. So it gives you a little bit more power in being able to kind of identify where you may need to apply a bit more pressure to get what you need done in the business. As well as noting that anything is again, downloadable with the MI reports here, exportable for your use in a CSV file. For the sake of time, I'm gonna jump into the policy portal part of the platform. So moving over from the policy management and now policy portal. And if we remember essentially the policy portal is truly where the published policy goes for internal employees in this case. So we're gonna to continue to use the global sanctions policy in, the, as in this example. I just wanna highlight that given I'm an administrator in the system here, your employees would not necessarily see everything that I'm seeing. So they'll have a lot more limitations on their views and you're able to control who can access what. But ultimately, if I open up a policy, this is what it will look like to, an, to, to a final employee. So they'll be able to see the document itself. But what's really, really nice is they can also come in and use the compare button where they won't have the, the, the privilege of seeing the, the audit trail per se, but what they will be able to do is use the same sort of editing buttons to see what has changed in the document from the previous to this one. So it makes it very quick for them to assess what's different, what's new, what do I need to be responsible for? And as a result of this, what you can ultimately do, oops, I'm so sorry. We're still in the global sanctions policy here. I can then create attestation requirements. So in this case, quite simple, the, the box with the check mark representation, I can come in, create an attestation. I can set a deadline and I can assign this to an individual, to a group or to everyone in the organization at once. If I were to use myself as an example, although I've already attested to this, what it essentially is going to look like 
is this blue box to an internal employee. They'll have the ability to check off and uh, confirm that they've read and they've understood this. And what this means for you as a manager from a reporting standpoint is the ability to come in and similar as we saw in the policy management with the interactiveness of the graphs. I'll use the, the reports by policies as an example in this case, but you can use by users as well. Let's assume I wanna see everything, all the policies I have within my financial, financial crime risk folder. You can see here, I have a full list of attestations, who was on time, who has missed it, and who completed it, but was over the deadline. So all of this to say gives you tons of visibility. It makes it incredibly simple for your employees to be able to come in and attest again with the single sign-on capabilities. There's really no sign-in or needing to remember any sort of passwords to get in. Um, so when a new document is published and it is published to that group or to that employee, they will receive a notification via email. That email will contain a URL like we've seen before, and that URL will bring them directly into that document or into that attestation. So. I am going to stop myself here. Um, I do want to leave a few moments for Q&A. So I think, Amanda, if you can share some with me, I'm, I'm happy to answer some as well. Yeah, sure. So you got a bunch of questions. And if anyone has oh. any questions, again, feel free to put them in the Q&A box. And we can always um, answer them after the call as well. Um, but we got a question from Karen around, do you have to use our editor? And, and how does it work with uh, Microsoft Word? Ultimately, uh, do you have, so the, the first question, do you have to use the editor? The answer is, is, is no, you don't have to use the editor. You, you saw the ability to upload policies into Plasmat. My recommendation would be that you're not making the most of the platform in that case because we have the editor. So the idea is that you're not using Microsoft Word and that you're using Plasmat's editor instead. The real value for you there, uh, I believe it was Karen you said, is the ability to then maintain that evidencing, that audit trail, um, and and those track not those track changes, but the versioning as well to overlay on one another. Perfect. Um, and Allison had a couple of questions. The first one: Does this tool come with the regulatory documents preloaded? Um, and if so, is there a notification when an update to these are available? That is an excellent question. And the very transparent answer is no. So ClauseMatch is not a content or a data provider. So we do not provide the regulations themselves. Uh, the regulations that you saw in the system throughout the demonstration are ones that we've gone online. You can download the regulation from the website and upload it into ClauseMatch accordingly. Um, those type of tools in terms of the regulation changes, those type of tools are what are known as horizon scanners, um, in which we work with, you know, a number of different partners that we're happy to refer you to. Uh, but clause match itself is not the horizon scanning tool. Perfect. And then another question, does this tool integrate with GRC tools like Archer? Uh, integration is a, is a possibility that integrate all of the integrations do require a scoping from our, our product team. Um, so I wouldn't be comfortable saying yes or no, depending on the type of integration required, but we do have the API capabilities to be able to evaluate if that's something we will do. Okay. And another question I want to ask, cause we get this a lot from clients is what type of documents can you upload? Is it only Microsoft Word documents or are there any other types that you can? That's a, another really good question. So in terms of uploading into ClauseMatch that, um, or documents that can be opened in ClauseMatch, it is solely a docx uh, document. That having said that, you can, like anything else, you know, insert tables, insert images, have all of those elements in your document. You also have the ability to attach other, to other sort of documents being, you know, PDFs, Excel documents, PowerPoint. The main distinction is that you just can't open them in ClauseMatch. You'd have to download them from ClauseMatch, but Essentially, what you can do is then associate them to a docx doc, a policy you have, or a procedure you have. Perfect. All right. And I know we only have a minute left, so I think we're going to wrap this up now. So I want to thank you, Claudia, uh, for giving the demo, and thank thank you everyone for joining. Um, we're going to send out a follow up email tomorrow with a link to the recording. And if you have any other questions or comments, feel free to email us um, at evolve at clausevatch.com, and I'll provide contact details in the follow up email tomorrow. So thank you, everyone. Have a great rest of your day. Thanks, everyone.